Howdy, folks. Just checking in. Have something a little bit interesting. Uh, nope, not this. But actually this. Finally, have a 3D printer. Now, the reason that I got this, actually, is because I'm building a flow bench. And what I can do is scan a cylinder head gasket and then trace that out in the CAD software and then print an adapter from that to a vacuum cleaner. I have an anemometer so I can print an adapter for the anemometer and, and everything else. This will allow me to fixture a wide variety of cylinder heads in a relatively short amount of time by using a 3D printer to create adapters for the flow bench. Now when you get a 3D printer, um, besides printing gimmicky things, one of the first things that you print is uh, upgrade parts for your 3D printer. And so I've already done that. You can see down here at the base of the fan there's a, a custom shroud there to direct air to the tip of the nozzle. And up here the Bowden extruder has an upgraded part. And I actually couldn't find anything that quite met the needs that I wanted so I ended up designing this. Originally it looks like this. <clears throat> where it's just this square here. And what I wanted to do was have a guide so it would go around the screw here for the z-axis. And that's what this part is here. And then that worked out pretty good. I liked that, but the CR-10S, this is a CR-10S, which has a couple of upgrades. One of them is a switch to sense when the filament runs out, so it, well, stops the print. And I believe it actually has a resume option as well, so you can resume printing haven't tried that yet so I don't know how well it works but it's kind of an afterthought because it's this thing that dangles out here off to the side it's supposed to clip onto the thing and it sort of guides the wire around the z-axis screw but yeah I didn't like it so much so this is what I came up with uh, so as you can see that's the the Bowden extruder with the nozzle for working with flexible filament and there's the hole for the LED because the the filament sensor does have an LED and then it's really difficult to see but down in there is a very nicely shaped cup that holds the micro switch and pushes the uh, filament through without it getting hung up on anything so I think this is a pretty nice design and then here on the end which you can see I've really done pretty well at creating like a, a flared countersunk sort of hole for the filament to feed into so that way you can see here I have kind of this extreme angle going on. It has no problem feeding into there without uh, hanging up or anything like that. It kind of makes this annoying squeaking noise though. The other things that I've printed out are hold down clamps. Now I actually had to modify these a little bit because I put them on the inside instead of the outside. So this is actually the top of a server screwed to a filing cabinet and then these clamps and I printed six instead of four because I noticed you know with this bouncing up and down a little bit that would um, kind of mess with the prints so uh, there are six clamps total and all of that is screwed through this sheet metal into the filing cabinet directly so this printer doesn't shake around at all and uh, I also placed it here behind the server rack. I just kind of put this here because of experimentation. Um, but the idea is that the heat from the servers kind of helps keep things uh, cooling off gradually so we don't have parts peeling up and everything else. I'm still learning a lot about 3D printers. I've just kind of scratched the surface on this. Right now we're uh, printing some big leveling knobs, so I don't have to awkwardly get in here to turn this knob when I want to level out the bed. I've replaced the factory glass with a mirror, so it's a flatter piece of glass. I still had to use a couple pieces of paper to space it in the center um, and then put the clamps on. So, you know, it's, it's a 3D printer. They're kind of, kind of fiddly, but once you have it dialed in, you can start really making parts and leveraging this rapid prototyping stuff to your advantage when it comes to projects. I mean, the flow bench is, is just the beginning. 
I have flexible filament as well, so I'll be able to like print little gaskets and things. Um, none of this stuff works in a wide enough temperature range to where I could actually bolt it onto an engine and use it. But I'm actually working on that because there are filaments that uh, do work very well within that temperature range and you could print things like water outlets and even intake manifolds and that is the type of stuff that I would like to explore. But at least in the context of uh, doing the cylinder head flow bench, uh, printing hovercraft parts um, for the uh, Rubicon sway bar controller, I can finally print the cover plates and offer a complete kit with the redesigned board uh, and the cover plate. So um, that's something coming soon. I can finally print uh, adapters. I was originally going to use fiberglass and I was kind of um, being lethargic about that whole project because fiberglass is messy and everything else. Now it's not a big deal. I can take my planar EL panel displays and actually mount them in a Corrado instrument cluster by printing the bezels, which is also the adapter, right? And then gluing that in place or finishing it. Don't have to sand for hours or mess with fiberglass. So I'm pretty happy with that. But I figured I would share this uh, CR-10S uh, Bowden extruder upgrade that does incorporate the uh, filament out sensing switch. So I'll go ahead and throw this on, on Thingiverse and I'll put a link to that down there in the description. And uh, if you like this and you like computers or hovercrafts or... Actually, I, I do have my hovercraft over here. This is destroyed because well, we went backwards into a fence at full speed. But I am building another hovercraft, so that's coming real soon, and, and this will be nice because I can finally leverage this to create some awesome stuff like that. Um, so definitely subscribe if you like that, or vintage laptops, or computers, or, or cars, because upstairs in the garage is a bunch of engines, and like I said, we're going to be porting cylinder heads, and... Uh, we're going to be setting up uh, NAS, and that's a tape library, and those are all tapes. So, you know what, folks? There's a lot of interesting stuff on this channel. And this is another piece in the puzzle. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned. See you later.